sessions, we came up with some ground rules for our board meetings, and there are only five of them. I'm just going to quickly read through them. Show respect, words and body language, no side conversations, one person talks at a time, ask questions in advance and clarify ahead of time, and cell phones are put away. Okay, hopefully we can follow those so that our meetings are professional. Um, we have some amendments to the agenda. I will read through them for you. We're going to move 6.2 to right after 8.7. We'll move 6.3 to right after 8.7. And we will move 1 we have to move to executive session. 8.5 we will move to executive session because it deals with personnel. Okay, any questions on that? All right, is there... Um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Move mm -hmm. by Melissa. I'll second. Second by Laverne. Questions? All in favor? Yes. Okay. Um, celebrate successes in the district. Our new teacher in service. Can you speak to that? I can. We had a very um, productive week with our new teachers. A little bit different from before. Um, the first couple of days, the first day was spent on classroom management and creating a classroom plan and visiting with principals to learn about routines and structures in the school. The second day, our teachers met face-to-face, one-on-one with a mentor teacher to learn about the curriculum and how to um, do some things at Infinite Campus and some of the things that are very specific to the classroom and to their grade level. Um, I'm hoping that that connection of one-on-one -on -one mentor will help them as they have questions throughout the year that they met in the very first day. On Wednesday, we learned about how to run a morning meeting. We did some fun energizers. Um, we, in the afternoon, they took a tour of the entire district, except for, I think, Lakeview, because of the road out there, so they could get a feel for the communities. Um, did they learn the school song? Yes, I taught them. Good. They were supposed to learn the school song, so they can sing that as well. And then on Thursday and Friday, they um, had the opportunity to hear from Dr. Howe and to learn about some culturally responsive practices that they could implement to their teaching. And so I, they had a very, very full week. We ended with a Wachipi where they learned about dance and etiquette if they choose to attend a Wachipi, which we hope that they will. So we had a very productive week. I want to thank all the administrators who all pitched in and were there to help as well as Jane Shelbourne that did a lot to organize that event and then Troy organized the lecture that we had. So it was a very successful first week for our, our brand new teachers. Thank you. 
I'm going to back up just a little bit here to number two on your agenda, the public forum board comments. The Tatrani School District encourages participation by the parents, tribal education, the Rosewood Sioux Tribe, and the community before the meeting is called to order. An individual who desires to speak at the school board meeting must verbally or in writing inform the superintendent, business manager, or board president of the person's desire to speak and the topic to be addressed. And there is a five-minute time limit on those. Okay? Okay, on to number six. Tim Johnson is here to give us a report on the Hilliard CCAP program. Sir. Just right here, fine? Sure. All right, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me thank you all for having me come out. I've uh, been out a couple times to talk a little bit about this. And I've been told we have about 10 minutes. This is usually something that can take me about two hours. So <laughs> I'll condense it. Um, basically, uh, first of all, we currently do business with Todd County. Uh, uh, we sell, uh, back up, I work for a company called Hilliard. In case you don't know anything about Hilliard, we're a chemical manufacturer based out of St. Joe, Missouri. We manufacture industrial cleaning chemicals and floor coatings. Uh, and then have 28 branches around the United States that basically sell custodial supplies, toilet paper, can liners, anything and everything that would go into cleaning any type of building. So uh, with that being said, um, I'm the general manager in our Sioux Falls office. Um, I've been with Hilliard 23 years. I oversee our locations in Sioux Falls, Rapid City, and Omaha. Uh, so basically what we have is we have a program that's called CAP, CCAP, it stands for Cleaning Cost Analysis Program. Basically what this program is designed to do is it is a virtual blueprint of all your school buildings as far as what there is for cleanable square footage. So basically what we have is we have two full-time employees that work out of Sioux Falls that will go out and measure and count your facilities. Meaning we'll walk into a room like this, we'll measure the cleanable square footage and we'll count the fixtures, we'll give the floor type. So in here it would be X number of square feet, there would be X number of tables and X number of chairs, garbage cans, all of those things. Once we measure that and each room has its own virtual fingerprint, we enter that into a program and what it does is it generates numbers. It tells us how many square feet we have to clean, what our floor types are, how many fixtures there are to clean, toilets, sinks, urinals, anything and everything that a custodian would do on a day in and out day out basis. Once we've gathered all that data, we sit down with administrators, buildings and ground supervisors and basically look at what we can get done or what they would like to get done or have done. Generally speaking, um, when you look at a facility, there are two things. There's X number of minutes available to clean that facility, meaning we know how many custodians we have and we know how much time they have. So there are a set number of minutes to clean. So what our goal is with this program is to try to help people determine what can we get done with the number of minutes that we have available. And the reason that's important is a lot of times we'll go into facilities and certain people, administration, public, thinks that the building should look like this, has an expectation of this, but in reality when you look at the number of minutes available per day to actually clean, it's this. So what the program is designed to do is help bring those two closer together. Have realistic expectations, set them up for our custodians, and then we provide training. So once we, we, we've done that, we, we find out what we can get done, um, then we look to optimize. We look at maybe looking for things where we can create some efficiencies, maybe do something faster, better, easier, um, to improve the overall level of clean. It's a very in-depth program. It has, a lot, uh, it has a lot of information. It will give you information as far as approximately how many people do you need to do the things that you would like to do within your building. What's your product cost going to be? Um, what's the training available? Uh, what your cost per user is, how much uh, cost per student, um, and it helps give administration a very good guideline as to what the spend should be when it comes to the custodial side of things. We get called in quite a bit when people are not completely satisfied with the way their buildings look. Okay, So our goal is to come in and help to create a cleaning program that provides the safest, or the safest cleanest most cost-effective program there is. 
Um, we did a pilot building here probably five or six years ago. Um, we measured it, we inputted the data, uh, we did all that, and once we did that, the product, uh, it, it really just didn't go anywhere. And Dr. Whitney approached us back in June to talk to us a little bit about more, a little more about what we have to offer as far as the program goes. So, like I said, it will provide a great deal of uh, information. I do have some stuff to hand out for the board members if they would like it. And it kind of takes you through everything that's done. Uh, this is the vendor managed program, meaning that we do all the upfront work. We measure, we input the data, we create the training material, and then <clears throat> once we have that all created, then probably the most important part of the program is, is, is how it's supported. And how it's supported is we come out and train the custodial staff. We were here in June and did a half a day training. And with this program, uh, we like to think that we would be able to come out and train two to three times a year uh, or individual. Myself personally uh, would be involved with it, but we also have an account manager based out of Rapid City. His name is Kevin Hintz. Uh, Kevin has been a account manager for Hilliard for 24 years and is extremely knowledgeable in what it takes to clean buildings and teach people the proper way to do it. Um, some references, some places around that people would maybe be familiar with that are involved in the program. Uh, Brookings School District, Watertown School District, Mitchell School District, Harrisburg School District. Uh, we're currently in a uh, a pilot test with Rapid City Schools. We have nine of their buildings that we're, we're in the process of going through this with. Um, nationwide, we have over 200 million square feet of K-12 education measured and capped out. So we're very confident that if we do a good job of gathering the data and we have the right information, that we can help a school develop a very solid cleaning program or at least go into it where the expectations are set that this is what we can get done with the time that we have, and if that's all we've got, then that's all we can do. Um, sometimes people will uh, they'll know we have to have a, a, a we have to have a cleaner facility, so it may mean we have to add people. The program will give you an idea of how many people you would need to add. Um, we use the program sometimes where schools will come to us and say we're cutting, we're cutting a, a custodian, so. We don't try to convince people that they should do this or shouldn't do this. All we're concerned with is if there is a change in the number of minutes available per day to clean, we need to make sure that we're adjusting the tasking involved so it meets the number. We can't expect people to do more or get things done if they don't have enough time to do it. Um, what we found with the program is that is, uh, it's done a good job of creating accountability at all levels, um, as well as uh, it's done a, a good job of maintaining employees. One of the big things we see in our industry is turnover. Uh, turnover, turnover of custodians, uh, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's an important thing, and it, it's costly to a school district, because one, you have to find somebody, and that's not always the easiest thing, but two, they also have to go through a training process so they have an idea of what to do. Um, I brought some training material ideas for you guys to just take a look at as well. These are the types of things that we put together for uh, a school district that basically will break down any area and uh, list what should be done on a daily basis as well as what should be done on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis based off of the discussions that we've had with the school district and what their expectations are. So uh, without getting into a whole lot more detail, I know Dr. Whitney wanted to give people uh, an opportunity to ask some questions, and, and if you have questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, address them. So is this program going to, almost like a maintenance program, you see a uh, pre preventable maintenance program where it shoots out like a task, like a work order type task thing where you can still for your custodians so they know what areas they're assigned to, like if one would call in sick or something got switched up for the day, is, is it, it capable of doing that? Too? Yes, there's a, it's a great question. Basically, there is a part of this program that's called task manager, and the task management part of the program is, is what uh, ability. And what 
that does is that allows the, the individual to go in and adjust schedules. Um, a, a good example is sometimes you'll have a game night where you'll have an evening where you'll have a volleyball game, basketball game, whatever. Our custodians are required to set up and tear down for that event. So what happens is that, that takes away from their, their cleaning time. So what task manager would allow them to do would be, it would allow them to go in and create a, a schedule for game night. Or if you had someone who called in sick, you would be able to go in and adjust what you were going to do that night because maybe you were down a person and couldn't get us up. As far as like printing out work orders and things like that, it's not there yet, but they're working on doing that and, and incorporating that into so, it. So, but it would print out the whole task, yeah. the whole schedule. Yep. That's so it. that in the morning, like the head custodian, if they knew there was a game night and things were going to switch up, went in there and change it, so that he could provide that to all the custodians yep. so they would have it. At the click of a button, we would basically go in and create that within the program, and then it would be available um, for any of those types of situations. But later down the road, you foresee it becoming like a preventable. Total work order. Yeah. Total yeah. work order. Yeah. We, Where you some, get there in the morning and you're, you're assigned these. I want you to come to work for us. Because what we're, we've been, this program is 20 plus years old. Meaning it's been around, we've been working on this for 20 years. Um, and it's been very successful. But one of the things that we continue to strive for is with this program, what we want is a custodian, a head buildings and grounds person, a business manager, whoever's in charge of the custodial staff, the first thing they do when they walk in the morning is turn this program on so they can look at it. So it becomes very valuable to them. So yeah, it, it, we're, we're constantly uh, improving it. Okay. Are you working with any of the smaller schools? Uh, winter. Uh, is, is involved in our CAP program. Anything like White River, Martin, small schools like that? Um, probably, I'm not quite so sure um, on the western part of the state, but back on the eastern side, we'd be looking at uh, like West Central, uh, Mill Bay. No, I mean in our area. I don't think so. Winter would be the closest one that we've got here. Okay, so, all right. One thing I'd like you to do is come visit with us custodians at our school. Mm -hmm. Talk to us so we can tell you what we do on a nightly basis. Now I'm a night custodian from 3 to midnight. And so that's where we do our heavy duty cleaning at night. Yep. During the day I understand I can't do heavy duty cleaning. But come and see what we do. And you know, I hope you're not trying to change up, develop a whole new wheel. No. No, no, I meant once again, very good question. I want to make it very, very clear that we do not come in and establish what you're going to do. We, we have nothing to do with that. All we do is we gather the information of what is being done on a nightly basis in a classroom, for example. When you go into a classroom, what are the things you're doing on a, on a nightly basis? And those are the tasks that get put into the program, and those tasks actually have a time associated with them. So it gives you an idea of how long it should take to do this specific task. And that's not a Hilliard time. That is actually set up through uh, a, a group called APO or the ISSA standardized cleaning time. And Does it take in the variables? Yes. We also, within part of the program, we also have what's called non-custodial hours, meaning non-custodial cleaning. And that would be defined as anything that takes away from daily cleaning. But what I'm saying is, there are times I can go into an area and it can be as big and span. I can go into that area the next night and it can be a total mess. Does it take into account if, you, if I'm allowed 20 minutes to clean a room and the next night it's a total mess, do I have to, 20 minutes is up, then I have to just let it go? Um, no, I mean, one of the ways we train is, I mean, there, there is no exact science to what a room looks like from day to day, but what we train is, uh, when we come in to do this, we clean. We train our custodians to clean dirt and see when they see dirt, you clean it. So you may have that instance where, for example, take this room for example. Let's say this group just trashed this room tonight and it would take longer to clean tonight, but you walk in tomorrow and you can tell by not a chair has been moved, there's no garbage in the garbage can, any of that type of things that common sense would tell us and we will train off of, hey, if this room hasn't been used today, move to an area that needs more time associated with it. Um, 
we're allies to the custodial group because we know what you do, we know what you clean, we know what you deal with on a day in and day out basis. That's really what we're trying to establish here is we're trying to establish what you can get done in the amount of time that you actually have. And I will tell you, uh, based off the 23 years of experience and being involved with this, 99% of the school buildings that we deal with are not staffed properly, meaning they either don't have people in their buildings at the right time or they're understaffed. I would say in my 20 years, my 12 years in South Dakota, I would tell you I've been to two school districts that are actually overstaffed when it comes to what they actually expect to get done on a day in and day out basis. So we know what you're dealing with and we know what you're up against. And, um, Madam Chair, I've got a couple of questions. If you want to use up your 10 minutes? <laughs> I got a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, is there any helpful uh, directions given to the administrator of the individuals that we're working with, do they also get some kind of training, some knowledge of the work that could be done? And then also I got a second question is, there is such a thing as uh, during the school year when our buildings are kind of being used to their capacity, uh, then when we get a little break in the two months in the summer, but there's a program or something that that could be where you'd come in and make an inspection and say, hey, we need to improve this building, et cetera, et cetera, because it hasn't been able to be maintained to its exception. So is there such a... Yes, there, there, um, to, to uh, address that, we would like to think that we'll be doing inspections within your buildings more frequently than just in the summertime. But when we run the program initially uh, and to create the data, we do it for the nine month school year because that's when the building has its heaviest use and that's when the day in and day out cleaning takes place. Then in the summertime, what we can do is we can take the square footage that we've got and we can change the tasking over to some things like uh, extracting carpets, stripping floors, doing gym floors, whatever they would do from a renovation standpoint uh, would be in the summertime. But yeah, and, 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 and as far as your first question, as far as administration goes, absolutely. We want administration involved in it so they, when we're done with all the, uh, all the data and we've gathered all the data and we get there, Every administrator will have a book, and that book will have everything in it that is going to be done in their building or expected to be done in their building on a day in and day out basis. So the reason that is is you could have a teacher that could come in, and I come from a family of educators, so uh, you could have a teacher that could come in and they're upset because something didn't get done in their room that night that they think should get done. But the reality of it is when we did the program and we did the time analysis, it came back and said, that's not something that gets done. So it's administration's responsibility to, to instruct the people in the building as to what is going to get done and what is not going to get done. We don't want the custodians getting into it with people in the building saying, that's not my job, that's not what I'm supposed to do. It has to be driven from the administrator's standpoint. They'll have everything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. If there are any other questions, feel free to give me a call. Want these back? I know you can keep those. I brought those out for you guys to keep and look at as an example as to what we do. All right? Thank you. Okay, as I said earlier, we're going to move 6.2 and 6.3 to after 8.7. So we'll go on to 7 discussion. Um, The third reading of the school board policies. Anybody have any questions on them? I do. Okay. On DEBC, and then going back to what our Mr. Freeman said. So, are we saying then, like when we have a student hearing, all five of us need? Are we saying that if there's three here, then two is a majority? No. Then yes. hearing you would need five. If there are three here, then all three need to vote the same. Okay. Thank 
Okay, so just the way I understand. What it happens in the situation in a regular meeting that can come back, but in a student hearing, it wouldn't be able to come back. I mean, that it's done. So what if you have only three board members show up for a student hearing, and it's a two-one vote? Yeah, then what happens? Then we would have to go with the recommendation. Huh? We would not go with the recommendation. So one person could. I would think in that case it would have to be brought back. But then you have to, the legality, this is as I got the need to bring that up because it's a regular hearing. You can't be here for the same crime. It's the same situation. So I guess that's what That would be a complication. I guess you could get an opinion of it, but yeah. I think what, this is just my understanding, Madam Chair, that it, it takes three out of the five to accept your passing. If there was only three present, it takes three of them. question on it, uh, like what is our description of what uh, a paraprofessional, is there a category and a scale of thumb that we have established? Like there, so we have a scale for paraprofessional positions, so, and that's been conferred with in the class. hired as a paraprofessional. And you could also be doing a student teaching, but we do that with all of our student teachers right now. They're hired as paras while they're doing their student teaching. It's, a, it's somehow how we can draw them here in the hopes of training them and then putting them under contract. Well, I understand that, phase. The part I want is about the salaries. Where do we go to look what we have? Yeah, it falls under that for the staff. Yes, we just don't do that. Okay. Um, school, we don't think Madam Chair. Oh, I don't think she'll be here. Okay. Madam yes. Chair, before we, uh, we did the third reading, but what was we saying? Are we moving to approve it? Send me a consent agenda. No, I'm talking about it on policy. That's where it is right now. It's in the consent agenda. Oh.